Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to discuss some of the most recent discoveries about one of the strangest objects in the solar system, or at least the strangest cometary object. An object that despite technically being a comet, never produces any tails, usually has very unpredictable eruptions, and to be more exact, is actually a giant space volcano. An object we refer to as 29P Schwassmann Wachmann, I think. Okay, let me try this again. Schwassmann Wachmann. Anyway, the name is right here. And while well, ever since its original discovery, the subject was always a little bit more mysterious compared to every other comet. Because first of all, it's actually something that's known as a centaur. A type of a larger asteroid or a larger comet, usually orbiting between Jupiter and Neptune, that we actually believe most likely came from the Kuiper's belt. And though quite a lot of centaurs are known to us, only approximately 30 have actually been discovered to contain cometary features. Interestingly, one of them made the news in the early 2024 when a different object known as 12P Pons-Brooks, a comet on an elliptical orbit of 71 years, whose original emissions looked something like this, was actually discovered to contain unusual horns, or unusual spirals that only became visible when the images were processed. And this unusual comet, that sometimes is also referred to as the Devil Comet because of these horns, was captured by several amateur astronomers, including Juris Senikovs, who captured this from Latvia. You can find the original pictures in the description below. In essence, once again confirming that these unusual comets are very different from a lot of similar objects. Here, these unusual spirals can only be produced as a result of massive volcanic eruptions, or basically emissions of cryomagma, which happens when the solar radiation cracks the object open, with a lot of cryomagma spewing out as a result of internal pressure. And so for approximately 30 of these objects, we actually see these emissions quite regularly during the closest approach to the Sun. So for this object, it usually happens every 7 years. But for 29P, the story seems to be a little bit different. This is the only center known to us, and the only cryovolcano known to us, that seems to have extremely unpredictable emissions that happen quite a lot, and in some cases make this object ridiculously bright. This time, just a few days ago from when I'm making this video, it went up in brightness by a ridiculous 300 times, essentially in what seems to be just sheer hours. Once again reminding us that this is really one of the most mysterious objects out there, and to this day, scientists have actually had a lot of trouble trying to explain this, although one of the recent observations from the James Webb potentially provided some clues. We'll talk about this in just a moment. But first, so what do we actually know about this as a fact? Well, we do know that this is a relatively large object, possibly 60 kilometers or 37 miles across. We also know that with every single eruption, it always produces these unusual reflective clouds, which seem to be the result of cryomagma flying into outer space. And that's actually what makes it so bright. The reflection from this cryomagma as it spreads away from the comet makes it appear ridiculously bright as the sun reflects from all of these particles. And in some of the previous studies, researchers basically estimated that the eruptions here seem to happen at least 7.3 times per year, or at least that's the average number. The actual eruptions are still extremely difficult to predict. As a matter of fact, last year, in 2023, we've discussed the first time ever such prediction was technically made. You can learn about this in a video in the description, but in a nutshell, scientists finally saw some initial signs predicting an upcoming eruption. And the only explanation we have for these unusual 7.3 times per year eruptions is just the fact that maybe this is actually how fast it's spinning. So basically here, if it had a 57 day periodicity, suggesting that it spins really slowly, this could explain some of these eruptions. But because they're not exactly 7.3 times per year, it's still unclear exactly what's happening here. And one of the biggest mysteries is really the fact that, well, it's technically in a very circular orbit. You can see the orbit right here. And so it never really gets too close to the Sun, unlike other comets, which means that it technically shouldn't even have eruptions, and obviously should never become a comet. And well, it doesn't. It does not get a tail, it never really gets close to the Sun, and does not acquire typical cometary features. Yet, it does erupt, which is why most scientists refer to this as a true cryovolcano. Basically, a space volcano that for some reason erupts once in a while. And its last major eruption that increased its brightness dramatically was approximately three years back. 
We've also discussed that one as well in one of the videos in the description, and back then this was just as mysterious as today. We basically have no explanation for why sometimes it erupts so dramatically, and why it has these unusual explosive outbursts. And so these recent eruptions that started on November 2nd basically resulted in some of the most explosive events lasting for approximately 48 hours. And this time everyone failed to predict this in advance and nobody expected this to be so bright and so explosive. Which at first suggested that, once again, we don't really know what's happening. But then we had this additional study from just a few months back that did actually observe this comet with the James Webb Space Telescope. And here this was one of the observations of the outgassing events that discovered something we did not really expect at all. Here, as you can see from this image, there were actually two separate emissions of two different gases. On the one side we had the carbon monoxide jet with a little bit of carbon dioxide, but on the other side we only had carbon dioxide. This beautiful illustration shows us what most likely happened here and what this comet potentially resembles. And notice how this kind of looks like something we might have seen before, something from a different NASA mission. Here it potentially resembles the famous Arrokoth, the object captured by the New Horizons mission that to this date is basically the farthest object we've ever been able to capture on camera. And so here, because there were two separate emissions, researchers actually now think that it's most likely some kind of an aggregate object, basically containing at least two large pieces and very likely resembling a lot of other similar objects detected on the outskirts. Here, just like Arrokoth, it might be composed of two planetesimals, approximately 20 kilometers each, and each of the pieces contains different composition and very likely different structure. With one piece containing a lot of carbon monoxide, but the other piece containing a lot more carbon dioxide. And that's basically because we had two unusual jets. Two jets of carbon dioxide in the north and the south direction, and another jet with only carbon monoxide pointing in the north. It would be difficult to explain this if this was a single object containing the same materials. And so the most likely explanation right now is that this is basically two ancient pieces coalescing into a single object which were very likely formed on the outskirts in the Kuiper's belt. But eventually, just like so many other centaurs, it made its way into the inner solar system and is now stuck orbiting every 15 years in a somewhat circular orbit around the Sun. But because it's made out of this pristine material, sometimes, for some unknown reasons, very likely because of its very slow rotation, it seems to overheat and become extremely pressurized and produces these incredible cryovolcanoes seven times per year. Or at least that's the current explanation based on the observations from the James Webb. Now this obviously doesn't explain why the emissions seem to be different and why sometimes they're so explosive, but it definitely explains the difference in composition. And since these pieces represent leftovers from the early solar system, Honestly, this would be one of the most exciting objects we could visit one day in order to basically learn about planetary formation and the early solar system. As a matter of fact, we don't have to visit a lot of those other Kuiper Belt objects, we just have to visit this one to discover what's going on. But unfortunately right now, no mission to this object has been planned by anyone, with the only mission that's even going to these regions, the Lucy mission, unfortunately currently having no plans to visit any of these centaurs. It's going to be visiting the Trojans of Jupiter, so essentially these are kind of similar, but hopefully after it visits everything, maybe we'll have just enough fuel to possibly stop by this object as well. Or at least I hope so. I'm gonna cross my fingers here. Either way, based on these initial observations, if these assumptions are correct, this could definitively rewrite our assumptions about how we think a lot of these primordial objects are formed and how they're transported from the Kuiper's belt to the inner solar system. While also hinting that many of these objects potentially delivered a lot of stuff to the inner solar system, including maybe planet Earth. So yeah, a super important object, but an object we know very little about. Which means that we'll come back and talk more about this once there are some additional observations or once someone else discovers something absolutely incredible about 29P, especially after this recent extreme eruption. And so once we know something else, we'll come back and talk more about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, Share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow and as always, bye bye.